you know, tying it to gold is deflationary, right? At the time, you know, the, the market was upside down compared to how it is now. So gold was deflationary compared to silver, you know? And so what you're doing is you're working from silver to the dollar they viewed it as. So silver goes to gold, gold goes to- In this insightful analysis, Vince Lancey explores the deflationary nature of gold amidst evolving markets. Drawing a metaphorical parallel from silver to gold to dollars, L, the Federal Reserve's role becomes the enigmatic yet fragile wizard, offering rhetoric akin to politicians. Lancey's narrative unveils a captivating perspective on economic dynamics, prompting contemplation about true financial control. Stay tuned until the end of the video for more important things to understand from Vince Lancey. Okay, what are we gonna talk about this week? Well, number three there, we're gonna touch on The Wizard of Oz a little bit. Nothing in depth, I'm sure people know as much about it, if not more than me and how it relates to silver. I wanna to touch on today a little Fed economy comment because that's what's driving silver now. Not physical demand or not rate hikes per se, not Fed policy, but the the byproduct of Fed policy. So I wanna talk a little bit about that, a little bit of handholding, silver's lower, what's going on? I'll tell you what's going on and what we're going to start looking for the next trade higher and you know i'm not going to i don't have to blow smoke you know up your rear end here the bottom line is if silver makes a low in this area between now and no, now and november then it's making a significantly higher low than last year when they sold it down and they're selling it down right now so we'll get into that right now first the fed economy the fed and the economy so the the prevailing there are two prevailing economic things going on right now. The one that we're worried about is the one that people are acting on. And that is the Fed has raised rates enough. They should stop. And there's a delayed lag time, we'll call it, for this effect to hit the market. And the market, the bond rates are up. Eventually, that's going to hit stocks. It's about bonds and stocks. And it translates heavily into silver, if you remember last year. So bond rates are 5%, 6%, 7%. At some point, the stock market looks at that and says, well, that's stupid. I'm going to put my money in bonds because I feel like the, the, the opportunity cost is there. And so you get the bond market. It may firm up, but that's not the point. The bond market rates stay high in general. It was in April of last year that the Fed started raising. And when they started raising... And gold fix people know this. When they started raising in April, I said, you don't want to buy this dip. There are too many longs in the market and they're getting out. And this is, remember, the war started February. The war started. Market kind of didn't know what to do. Gold led higher. And then silver caught fire. And then it kind of gyrated around up here, volatile ranges. And then the Fed said they were going to raise. And silver dropped. And I was like, oh, let's buy the dip. Let's buy the dip. And I, I advise people to not do that. You do what you want to do. But I said, don't do that. There are a lot of longs that want to get in. I mean, that, that need to get out. And they did. Now, between April and September, the market was pretty much a shit show. Now, in September, in this time frame right here, I noticed there was physical demand. Remember, we we're talking about EFPs. Typically, I look at it to start in August. In August, So we already had a big sell-off and a lot of these guys puked, right? But then you in, in August, you get another sell-off. So in August... The market was here at $21 tops and then went down to $17.50, $17.50, $18, $17.65 or something like that, right? Okay, so from here to here, during the worst time of year for silver, believe me, between August and Thanksgiving is historically the worst time of year for silver flows. You had the market, go, and it's, by the way, this sucked. This is the Fed raising. This is not seasonality, right? And- uh then you had the market do this, and then buy season comes in. So from here to here, watch, from $21 to $18. Here we are starting at, call it $23, $23.50, all right? So the market is heading into its worst time of year at $23, $23.50 compared to $21, $20.50 uh, a year ago. That's a really good sign. Now, I'm not trying to make you go, oh, let's go out and buy it. I'm saying that this is a market that's in a secular change. If you just be patient, if you're a stacker, you're like, yeah, I know he's right. You don't care, right? But as a trader, I'm saying that we are now making 
lower highs and lower lows because it's the time of year when that happens. On top of that, they're selling it again. Okay, so you're going to have a downdraft, which brings me, so now we're in a part of the cycle where people get out and we're in a part of the cycle where, because of the end of the year, and we're in a part of the cycle where people are getting short because their CTAs told them, remember, sell copper, sell silver, sell stocks, sell everything, I need to save money. That's what's going on right now. You know, tying it to gold is deflationary, right? At the time, you know, the market was upside down uh, compared to how it is now. So gold was deflationary compared to silver, you know? And so what you're doing is you're working from silver to the dollar they viewed it as. So silver goes to gold, gold goes to dollars, okay? Silver shoes on the yellow brick road, bricks, and the yellow brick road leads to the Emerald City. The Emerald City is where the greenbacks are. The wizard is, you know, he's the Fed chief, however you want to look at it, but he's a politician in general. And he's a politician telling you that everything's going to be fine, but he's a weak and powerless wizard. In the end, what does he give them all? Now, maybe it's a nice feel-good story, depending on how you look at it, but he gives the Tim Man and, the, and the, those three guys, he gives them bullshit. Right. He gives them sales pitches. He gives them rhetoric. He gives them what politicians do. The wizard is a huckster. The evil witch, I don't know who the evil witch is, but th that's part of it. The three, the three friends, they were, I'm not sure exactly who they were, but of the three friends, like the cowardly lion was supposed to be, it might have been, I could be wrong about this, William Jennings Bryant, because he spoke very loudly, but when it came, when it push came to shove, he didn't do what had to be done. I, I could be getting that wrong. And then you had uh, the Tin Man, you know, the, the, these were important politicians at the time who didn't do anything or people who were there to help Dorothy, but she ended up helping them. So that's how the allegory goes. Dorothy is naive, young, and simple, represents the American people. She is every man led astray and seeking the way back home. Moreover, following the road of gold leads eventually only to the Emerald City. Correct, right? Which Taylor, Quentin Taylor, sees as symbolic of a fraudulent world built on greenback paper money, a fiat currency that cannot be redeemed in exchange for precious metals. That's right. It is ruled by a scheming politician, the wizard, who uses publicity devices and tricks to fool people and even the good witches into believing he is benevolent, wise, and powerful, when really he is a selfish, evil humbug. He sends Dorothy into severe danger, hoping she will rid him of his enemy, the Wicked Witch of the West. He is powerless. I think that might have to do with someone in California. I'm not sure. He is powerless, and as he admits to Dorothy, I'm a very bad wizard. That's it. There's a lot more to it than that. There's a lot of nuance that you people probably know better than me. But I just wanted to share that with you, that the Wizard of Oz, if you didn't know it already, she had silver shoes. And the silver shoes, the Gold Brick Road, the Emerald City, the fraudulent politician, and the three friends that were well-meaning, but really unable. And so I've got silver. I've got my silver shirt on. And have a great day. I'm Vince. As we conclude this captivating exploration guided by Vince Lancey's insights, we're reminded that the intricate dance of economic elements holds deeper complexities than meets the eye. Like the characters in a story, gold, silver, and dollars play distinct roles, each contributing to the larger narrative of financial markets. As we venture forth, may these reflections inspire us to navigate the financial landscape with newfound awareness and a clearer understanding of the forces at play. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like our videos, share them with friends, and subscribe.